Hi everyone, it's lovely uh, to welcome you to our online service for Mustard Seed Edinburgh. I'm uh, Rich Cornfield and I am the Pioneer Priest and I'm sort of going to be leading through a magazine style uh, service today so I hope it uh, makes uh, sense as we go along. Uh, I just want to say some wonderful things uh, are going to be happening. Lucas is going to be bringing our Bible reading. We've got George who's going to be doing a Palm Sunday reflection because it's Palm Sunday today so a, a really lovely day in the church year. Uh, we've got uh, Lauren, she's going to be doing some prayers and then I hope there's some really uh, good and interesting interviews included with Duncan uh, Cuthill who heads up uh, Edinburgh City Mission and also our very own Liz uh, who is our administrator and I just hope that adds a bit of colour and flavour to what we're doing and helps you understand how things are are going uh, sort of not just with mustard seed but across the board in Edinburgh. Uh, Ali uh, Aja has supplied some brilliant music in fact we, we've got lean on me by bill withers uh, today he sadly he died but ali's done an interpretation of lean on me perfect uh, for our start of holy week because that's what palm sunday means it's the start of holy week uh, a reminder to lean in uh, together on god and each other because uh, we need each other very much so at the moment and uh, so i hope you find it a, a lovely sort of uh, half an hour or so as uh, we just uh, reflect and think about uh, Palm Sunday and being a community together and praying together. Um, I sort of must say right from the front I love Palm Sunday so it feels very strange uh, to be doing it like this on video. I love the palm crosses, I love everything there is uh, uh, to do about it. I think it comes uh, from being a boy and uh, those palm crosses uh, are wonderful things to give to a six or seven year old boy because you suddenly they suddenly turn into uh, wonderful swords and the battles after church I can remember when I was younger were were wonderful but I'm not being very helpful there I don't think with that illustration but the other thing I think is uh, wonderful about Palm Sunday from my boyhood is we always had a donkey called Miranda turn up to church and uh, so it used to be a Sunday I really looked forward to as a young lad because there's always something interesting uh, going on on it so uh, let's hope that you get much more out of Palm Sunday than I did as a child uh, today. I just want to read you a, a, a quote uh, uh, today it's from 1200 uh, years ago uh, and it's by a martyr uh, called Andrew of Crete and he wrote this he said let us say to Christ blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord the King of Israel let us wave before him like palm branches the words are inscribed above him on the cross let us show him honour not with olive branches but with the splendour of merciful deeds to one another. I love that sentence, the splendour of merciful deeds to one another. Let us spread the thoughts and desires of our hearts under his gar feet like garments, so that they may draw the whole of our being into himself and place the whole of his in us. How wonderful, what a, a lovely way of coming to Jesus today uh, as we worship on this special uh, Sunday. Hosanna to the son of David, that's what's son said today. So we're going to start our worship off and I'm gonna read some liturgy uh, to you to help you focus on God, a God who loves you and a God who's with you wherever you may be. Hosanna to the son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Behold, your king comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon a donkey. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the special prayer for today. 
Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So today is a day to uh, sing and say and shout Hosanna for the Son of David. So Ali is going to lead us in the, the song Shout Hosanna. Then Lucas will do our reading for us, followed by George leading us in a reflection. And then uh, Ali will uh, be singing Lean on Me uh, and Lauren will lead us in our prayers. And then you'll see me again. So thank you, everyone. Let's uh, sing Shout Hosanna. <laughs> King of glory and life, all praises to the only giver of life, our Maker. The gates are open wide, we worship you. Come see what love will do, amazing. He'll buy us with his blood, our Savior. The cross will overcome. We worship you. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, he'll rise from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna. Now let the lost be found. Forgiven, death will not hold him down when risen. So let the saints cry out, We worship you. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, he'll rise from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Mark 11, verse 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a cross tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If someone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and we will send it back here shortly. They went and found the colt outside in the street, tied at the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw the, the cloaks on it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they cut in fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed jumped. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. And since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Hello, happy Master Cedars. Happy Palm Sunday. I like Palm Sunday. I hope you do. Today's thought is going to be, who is your Jesus? 
We all have our own ideas about Jesus. We all have our own picture of who Jesus is. How have you come by your own idea of Jesus? I would say it's probably a mixture of what Jesus has done for you and a reading of the four Gospels, a mixture of experience and the Bible. And that's where we get our unique picture of Jesus, our relationship with him. So the question is, what's your Jesus like exactly? And does the Palm Spirit Sunday story fit into that nicely? This story is a little bit unusual. Jesus doesn't speak. There isn't a famous saying neatly summing up the message in the last verse. The story is about an act of Jesus. It's an act of Jesus that's full of meaning though. In fact, it shouts. Just look at how Jesus' fellow pilgrims immediately pick up the message loud and clear. Their clothes, their branches, and their chant. And you remember the chant? Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now that's familiar. We say it every week before taking communion. Listen out for it next time. So it was understood at the time, no bother. What does this act of Jesus mean? What was so huge about it? What was it that the crowd was getting? Well, happily, the crowd knew their Old Testaments. The problem is, we don't. There are three passages in the Old Testament you have to know to get the story. Deuteronomy 18, 18, Zechariah 9, 9, and Psalm 118, 26. I'll read the key verses from each of these. So this is stuff out of the Old Testament. God to Moses, I will raise up a prophet like you from among their own people. Psalm 118, 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Zechariah 9, 9. Look. Jerusalem, your king comes to you, riding on a donkey. Now, one way or another, the crowd had got the message using those verses and other passages from the Old Testament. And the reason they were so delirious is that Jesus was at long last breaking his silence. This act, if you look at it from their point of view, breaks the by now unbearable suspense. For all these years, the people had repeatedly asked him, who are you? And Jesus had never given them a square answer. He remained ambivalent about it. Like John the Baptist, he said, it's not me. Jesus didn't say it wasn't him, but he didn't say it was him till today. The enigma Jesus is over. This is Jesus coming out. At last. No wonder the crowds were so excited. Because what Jesus, by getting on the donkey to ride the last few hundred meters, into Jerusalem by getting on a donkey, what Jesus was saying to them, yes. He was saying a big yes. He was saying, they kind of knew he was, but at last he was saying it. He could give them confidence. Yes, that's me. I am. You are right. I am the Messiah. So to finish up, who is your Jesus? Is this your Jesus? Is your Jesus the man who entered Jerusalem on a donkey? The unique, 
if only the true, the sent from God the Father, for the whole human race, then and now and into the future, the Savior of the world. My Savior, your Savior. Happy Palm Sunday. Have a good holy week. Sometimes in our lives we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you. Carry on, for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride if I have things you need to borrow. I'm starting with some words from Psalm 145. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call on him in truth. Father, thank you that you are near to us as we call upon you now. Thank you that we can rely on your promises, that your love is for everyone, and you invite us to bring the things that are troubling us to you. The whole world is struggling with the huge effects of the coronavirus. Lord, worldwide the situation is vast, and we hardly know where to begin with our prayers. Prompt us to be praying in our own time, for particular countries and situations that we hear about and which you lay on our hearts. But I mention now in particular Syria and Yemen, both caught up in civil war. We pray for the people daily affected by the dangers and lack of resources around them. And we pray too for the many refugees who have fled the violence, so many of them not yet in a safe, warm home and living with deprivation we can scarcely imagine. 
Lord, please help all the charities seeking to help and support these people. I pray that they would continue to receive donations so they can keep going with their work. And do not let other nations forget the plight of these refugees, our brothers and sisters living in such need. Lord, we bring to you all those affected by war or trying to cope as refugees and with the significant danger that this virus poses to them. <clears throat> Lord, close to, to home, I pray for particular groups of people at this time, for older people and those with underlying health conditions, putting them more at risk. For anyone very anxious about this pandemic and unable to find peace of mind, for people very ill in hospital, but unable to have a family or friends visiting, and the distress of those family members and friends made all the worse if they cannot attend a loved one's funeral. We pray for the amazing frontline medical staff, the doctors, nurses, health assistants and others working with such dedication to save lives. Lord, we pray that all the protective clothing and equipment they need will arrive everywhere it's needed and will keep coming. We think too of care home staff and support workers continuing to support people with physical or learning disabilities. You work through all these caring professions and other key workers. Keep them safe, Lord. We ask that the tests they need access to will quickly and widely be available. We pray for wisdom and best decisions to be made by our politicians and their medical advisors. Give them the energy and strength that they need too. Help the researchers working hard to have a vaccine available. Bring breakthrough and speed to their efforts, Lord. And Lord, we bring our own Edinburgh mustard seed and soul food community to you. I read these words yesterday. In times of crisis, more so than any other time, it is the poorest, most vulnerable and marginalised who are at greatest risk. We pray for each of our soul food guests struggling with poverty and homelessness and their situation now made so much worse. The psalm verses I read remind us that you provide food and are faithful to your promises. Lord, we thank you for this. We alone would struggle and on Thursday, Soul Food did struggle to meet the need. Lord, we can't do this alone. Please help us and bring help from other churches wanting to help in their own part of the city. Keep bringing people able to cook, help, drive, whatever is needed. And let there be plenty of donations to keep the work going. The need can feel overwhelming. And that's why, Lord, we look to you. You love and care for people in need more than we do. Lord, who fed the 5,000, hear our prayer. Bless and protect all the soul food helpers, Lord, there being your servants to marginalised people in this city. You put marginalised people at the centre. Help us to do the same. I pray especially for Rich and Jenny and thank you for all the hard work and support they're bringing at this time of greatly heightened need. Keep them and their families safe and well. Give them times of rest, Lord, and times of great encouragement. Thank you that you are with all of us through these days. Help each of us in Mustard Seed to help in any way that we can, including the vital prayers that are a true source of fuel for soul food and mustard seed, bringing your love and power into seemingly hopeless situations. Help us to be aware of anyone in our community who is struggling. It could be because of isolation, especially for people without online connection, or it could be someone not coping with others in their household, or worried about their health, their finances, their future. Help us to watch out for one another. We thank you for the support we have access to through our community of kindness. Lord, thank you that you are present in every expression of love and care. 
helping people just now. Let us be part of that love and care. We bring to you now in the silence people who are on our hearts who need your help. Thank you, Lord, that you are near to all who call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Thank you so much, Lauren. Let's just continue in an attitude of prayer and together let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Once again, thank you so much to Lucas, George, Ali and Lauren for your input into the service. It is so appreciated. We now are coming up to a couple of interviews, but just before we get to them, I wanted to reflect on last Thursday's Soul Food. Firstly, thank you to everyone who made it happen and thank you to for just creating a, a lovely uh, and important event and so you know we're trying to as much as possible to turn soul food into a delivery uh, service at the moment and on thursdays we managed to deliver 66 meals all around uh, leith and edinburgh normally on a normal uh, thursday we get 50 to 60 guests so to already have to uh, deliver 66 meals is an increase and because of that, we weren't expecting the huge number of people who turned up for a takeaway. Uh, but over 50 people did turn up for a takeaway. And you can't make a meal which was prepared for 90 people stretch that far. And Rini and Neil, uh, who cooked the meal, are geniuses in the kitchen. Uh, and somehow most people did get something, uh, even if the hot meal didn't quite stretch that far. There were other things that we could give them. And I was uh, there, and as we were doing all of this, I was feeling a few things. The first thing I was feeling is, this was hard. How are we going to meet all the needs I was seeing in front of my face? And the other thing I was reflecting, this is going to get harder over the next few weeks. And so how are we going to keep this safe like we must, uh, must do? Uh, now, I believe in my life, and I try and live out a simple verse found in Micah 6, 8. I shared this recently at one of our meetings in church. This is what the Lord requires of you, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I've always believed that soul food is us trying to actually embody uh, that verse from Micah. So soul food for me and always will be an act of worship, of connecting very deeply with God. But on Thursday that worship I must say was very complicated, it was confusing and it was clunky. It all felt a little overwhelming. How can we really do soul food well when things are like they are at the moment? I must say the soul food guests were very understanding on the whole but I did find it very challenging and I just want to say if you've got a moment this week where you can just pray for soul food I would deeply appreciate that. I'm sure Jenny feels exactly the same. I must say Jenny is doing a completely significant job in uh, developing soul food at the moment. We've opened a new soul food on Tuesday night at Carubba's, which is, is just wonderful. And it looks as though we might be opening a new one very soon at uh, Liberton. So wonderful things are happening uh, with soul food. It's just very complicated as well. So prayers would be very much uh, appreciated. But it's not just us uh, involved in this. Many agencies are trying to continue uh, to do stuff about this. So I caught up with Duncan Cuthill, or Cuthill uh, yesterday, who heads up Edinburgh City Mission. And we spoke uh, more 
about this. And so here we are now in this next bit of video. Hey, Duncan, Hi. so uh, good to see you. Can you just remind us uh, who you are? Because some people might not have seen you in flesh or on the screen before. So who are you? Yeah, OK. Uh, so I'm Duncan. I work with Edinburgh City Mission. Um, I've been uh, in my role as chief executive for the past three years. Yeah, and uh, it's just brilliant that you're in Edinburgh. There's so much uh, going on with Edinburgh City Mission and Charity and Natalia from Mustard Seed actually work with you as mission strengtheners. And yeah. there's just so much, uh, uh, I know you're doing so much uh, good stuff, but how are you in the midst of all of what's going on at the moment? Are you finding that life's a lot easier? Um, I wouldn't say that, no. Um, I guess like everyone, everyone um, personally and in terms of Edinburgh City Mission, I'm just navigating this new landscape and trying to work out the implications of it uh, at both levels, at a personal level and in terms of the City Mission, yeah. Yeah, what, what are the kinds of challenges you're, you're, you're finding at, at the Mission? Because you, you do basics banks which are like food banks plus with a real uh, emphasis on the relationship and you, you you do a soul food and then there's just so many little uh, other things going on around the city what what, what are the kinds of, of challenges you're, you're finding at the moment yeah well with the uh, um, basics banks the the numbers are going up um, and so we've uh, opened a new food storage center in site hill for people to drop off food after they've been to the supermarket um, so they just do one trip supermarket drop off with us and go home um, and uh, so we're, we're having to help supply more food through to the basics banks um, so the last couple of weeks we've spent over a thousand pound a week to top up what food that people are donating so there's that aspect and I guess the support aspect is um, uh, tricky so some of the volunteers have had to step back because of their age or their own health um, and so we're operating with smaller teams, um, but obviously we can't engage in conversation face to face with people. So it's literally um, people come and pick up food and uh, go back home. So we've, we've lost that face to face relational contact, which everybody has, you know, but that is affecting our, our work with people who uh, are uh, particularly um, experiencing, you know, financial crisis and, and and food poverty and because uh, we, we we support people during a crisis period just for a few weeks mm -hmm. for each person so it, it seems to me you, you just read the news and the donations to food banks has ha, has gone right down so it feels like that's that's happening a little bit with you although the you you, you, you are getting some stuff coming in but it's costing a lot more because you're actually having to to buy the food a lot more at, at, at the moment and mm. uh, and it seems to me you're saying your analysis is this is going to get worse there's going to be more people needing needing basics banks um uh, how how do you think you're going to deal with that um well so if i was to be completely frank financial donations are actually better for us than people dropping off food because that allows us to buy the specific type of food that each basics bank requires for that week. Um, whereas obviously if you get bags of shopping and it's all mixed in together and you have to separate it all out. Whereas if we go to the wholesalers then we can buy bulk buy and that's easier to distribute as well. So um, in terms of how we go forward, if the like, you know, it looks as though there's going to be a, a, a tsunami of people who will be um, in food poverty um, so we're just having to work out what the logistics of that could look like we're having to prepare for that and um, so to be able to buy food would be the best thing that we can that we can do to help the, the basics banks keep helping people and everybody that uh, is given food support are they're referred to us from an agency who've already done an assessment of, of the person uh, to make sure that they have got genuine need um, so we're you know we, we make sure that the system isn't being abused it's not an alternative for people to go into the supermarket where you know they can't get an item because there's none on the shelf we'll go to the 
food bank and said it doesn't work like that. They need the referrals, so it has to be people who are actually genuinely in poverty. Okay, thanks for that. I mean, our, our experience already on, on Thursday night is uh, the demand is increasing, and yeah. we're, we're, we're just concerned about how we're going to meet those those kinds kinds of needs. Yeah. Um, there. So when people think of Edinburgh City Mission, what what would be what would be what would you really like their response to be? How, how can can you just uh, say what people could do to support you at the moment? Yeah, so I suppose the other two things I haven't mentioned really are um, we replicated soul food across the Newington, as probably most people at the Mustard Seed know. Um, uh, last year, Miles is heading that up in Newington, and uh, this week he opened a second one, um, a second Edinburgh City Mission one um, at uh, Crubbers on the Royal Mile. Uh, so that's on Tuesdays, and Newington one on Wednesdays. Um, and then Natalia is continuing to do refugee support, so she uh, is in touch with national um, refugee charities as well as the council and other local um, refugee charities. So, um, I, you know, we'd love uh, people to pray for us. You can sign up for our prayer emails. We do weekly ones, we do monthly ones. Um, so whichever, you know, whatever... Uh, level of commitment would, would you know but we'd love you to pray for us we are continuing to to put our specific prayer needs out to people who are journeying with us in that way um and obviously if people spend time on their knees in prayer god can do amazing things great that that's really uh a good of you what i'll try and do uh, accompanying uh this video is i'll put the link to edinburgh city mission there so if people want to sign up to pray uh, that they can find the details there so, so so that would be great now today's palm sunday and i, I said at the beginning of this uh, uh video it's one of my uh, favorite uh uh sort of sundays in the year it goes back to to when i was a child but but it's about sort of jesus being messiah jesus being king and and who he, he is and the crowds as george uh said in his talk uh followed uh jesus in those moments, in these moments, these coronavirus moments, how how can you encourage us to follow Jesus? Um, well, that's a big question, but I'll, uh, a few things I get, you know, I guess, um, you know, often there's a verse in Mark chapter three, I think, where it talks about uh, that the disciples were, were with him, you know, and I know myself, I'm just having to, uh, uh, make sure that I still carve out time, that I um, just uh, talk to him and share what's going on in my life and ask for his help and insight and wisdom. Um, so I guess that just to keep for us all to keep our healthy relationship up with the Lord. Um, and then um, I guess, you know, one of the most beautiful aspects of, of Jesus was that uh, he was an activist, you know, he did, he, 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 he actually actively loved people um, and I guess that's um, one of the primary uh, things that Edinburgh City Mission would want to emphasise in the city that, that we, we, we need to be get, getting out and somehow, so finding ways to connect with our neighbours, whatever that looks like um, and, I, and I guess finally, um, maybe backing up and supporting what we've been talking about already, um, in Galatians 2, Paul, Paul uh, writes, um, uh, continue to remember the poor, don't forget about the poor, that in any crisis, the poor suffer um, exponentially more than, than the rest of us. Um, so, you know, for us to find ways, whatever that would look like, or, or support those who are supporting um, uh, poorer people, more vulnerable people in the city, um, I, th I think those are some of the ways that we can follow the Lord and, and uh, please him during this, during this crisis. That's, that's really helpful, dare I say, beautiful stuff. So thank you uh, very much, Duncan. We'll remember to pray with you. We're very grateful for everything Edinburgh City Mission is doing in the city, for its continued presence at, in these hard times. And just God bless you uh, as uh, your ministry continues. And please do keep in touch with us and let us know how we can support you because we really admire uh, what you're doing. So thanks so much, Duncan. Thanks very much. And if I can I just commend the, the team and the volunteers um, across the city who, who, you know, we partner with lots of different churches and just commend them 
for their resilience and determination and commitment during this period. Um, I'm so grateful to them and proud of what they're doing. Thanks. Thanks so much. So go well and we'll see you very soon. God bless. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Hi Liz, it's really good to see you. How are Hello. you going? I'm all right, I'm all right. You're all right, yeah. you're looking very, very good. It's lovely to see you. Anyway, um, you are here on our special service video just uh, to let us know the kinds of things you've been up to. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to just ask how we can uh, best uh, work with you over these times where we've got to be inside. So just tell us a little bit about what you've been up to. Yeah. Um, I have been quite busy, um, busier than I thought I would be. Um, so a big part of what I'm doing at the moment is getting in touch with um, our soul food guests and trying to um, sort of getting them a meal. Um, so I've been speaking to a lot of people, um, which is great to chat with them, but is, is hard work. Um, I have been trying to do a lot of communication um, with everyone in Mustard Seed at the moment and work out ways that we can keep connected. Um, so we're working on small support groups, um, which I've mentioned in a few emails and um, I've been getting in touch with people directly about that as well. So, yeah. Great. And uh, so I know the phone calls you're doing, it's, it's very demanding. I think there's about, we did 66 takeaway meals at Soul Food. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot, a lot of uh, phone calling uh, to do. And what I, my feedback I'm getting from the guests is just some of them really need that phone call. And it just reminds me, even though you're called to our administrator, you offer far more than that. You, you do the pastoral care stuff and it's so well appreciated i think especially i heard how you call some people back who you might be concerned about and, and they just say how helpful and and lovely that is so thank you for really doing that because i know it's very demanding all of a sudden we're having to work in this totally new way and yeah. and here you are uh doing the stuff and 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 I, I really appreciate it i know we all do so thank you very much indeed i know this is a hard question to ask because you are uh you're just such a wonderful person and and very strong and all of that kind of stuff but how can people help you in your role it's a question i get asked all the time and i get flummoxed over it how can we help you uh, but how can, how can we how can we help you um i i think just the main thing is responding if i email you um yeah i think we will, you know, we've been getting in touch with a lot of people um, recently trying to work out the best ways to, to keep people um, connected. And I think it just, just letting us know the best way um, so that, you know, we can get in touch with other people and, and, and try and connect you all up that way. Um, at the same time, you know, if people are needing help with things, get in touch with us so that we can work out how to, to help you guys. Um, that, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the things uh, I probably need to say is, my level of correspondence has gone up hugely over the last few weeks and if I've missed anybody's message or anyone's concerned as to why I haven't got in touch um, please just get get in touch please keep on getting in touch because because I'd hate to think um, that I haven't I've missed you or, or, or whatever I, I you know I we're just living in mad times where yeah. where your messages just are endless and and uh, yeah. it, it's easy to miss things but yeah. the other thing I want to say is um, uh, just for information really for people we're trying to care for the church and you've done a lot of work on that and um, and just tell us a little bit about that sure um so I think most people have seen, um, we have been sending out emails over the last two weeks with links to a wee form to fill out with your details um, and just the best ways that we can keep in touch with you. Um, so what is going to happen, we've, we've got a few people who are um, going to have, you know, a few people under their care to get in touch um, and to try and keep everyone connected um, over these, these next um few weeks um, and I know that some people prefer um, you know be connecting via like whatsapp or text or email um, so it's all very much going to be how how you need it to be um, it's not going to be you know we're not going to force loads of messages on you if that's not not what you want um, 
but we'll we'll get in touch over the next wee while just with um who will be the person to get in touch with you um and then you can work out with them the best way um for that to happen um and how often you need that to happen um if you're not happy with the person that we put you with that's absolutely fine um you know it 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 has to be um the way that you, you need it to be and you want it to be you know we're not going to make you do anything you don't want to do yeah but I, I think the main thing is we just so love everyone in Mustard Seed and yeah. want people to be connected and that's all we're trying trying to do and we recognise everyone does life differently but so we're not yeah. trying to interfere but we're trying to be yeah. on your side in all of this and if mm. nobody's spoken to you in these next uh, this next week or so just again get in touch with us so we can we yeah. can link you up yeah. so i've just... tried to get in touch with everyone who hasn't filled out a form but if i haven't been in touch with you and you haven't filled out a form and you would like to be connected please just get in touch with us so we can yeah. sort that out for you wonderful thank you so much indeed so we really value you we're very grateful for everything uh, that you're doing thanks so much liz and just you're keep welcome. going because we know it's tough out there but you're doing absolutely yeah. brilliantly it in it and we love you all we love you very much as well as every other person so yeah. thank you and looking forward to seeing you soon we could have a list spot every week i'm looking forward to that anyway mm, we'll chat about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah god bless anyway you keep going cool bye so thank you very much liz and thank you too to Duncan Cuthill uh, for finding time just to share what you did. It's really great to hear different voices. And thank you to everyone who's helped put this service together. And a big shout out to Neil Sheriffs especially, who's done a load of technical work uh, to make this possible this week. We do so appreciate him. And Please don't forget our Zoom meeting a bit earlier today at uh, six o'clock this evening. And don't forget our Holy Week activities this week. We'll be meeting on Zoom starting on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. this week. And we'll email out the Zoom invites uh, to those meetings as the week goes on. So it, all you have to do when you for the Zoom stuff is click on the email and it should take you straight uh, to the meeting. The final thing I want to say, in these times, as we're doing life very differently, don't forget you're loved. Loved deeply by God, by the Lord who marched into Jerusalem on that donkey all those years ago. Remember, he, he is so much with you at the moment and he's supporting us all on this journey. And the final thing is, remember that Mustard Seed is here from you and please do get in touch if you need anything. I've got two more prayers to do. Final, a, a final prayer which is being said right across uh, the land at the moment. A prayer for those affected by the coronavirus and then a final prayer of blessing. So let's pray. A prayer for all those affected by coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. And lift up all who are brought low. May they find comfort. Comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you all and all who you love, now and always. Amen. So see you next time. God bless you all and go well, won't you? <laughs>